fashion industry broadcast and Style Planet TV are proud to bring you their new Netflix original series, The Girl's Guides to the World of Designer Fashion. This new six-part series explores the seductive world of designer fashion. Series one, the history of lingerie. Series two, the legend of the designer bag. Series three, the mystery of the high heel. Series four, American fashion. Series five, Italian fashion, and series six, Paris fashion. Dolce Gabbana, Italian fashion. Arguably, two of the most iconic figures in fashion, Domenico Dolce and Stefano Gabbana, have been celebrating the glamour and culture of Italy through clothes since the 1980s. Often thematic and tongue-in-cheek, their collections transcend trends and are defined by opulent embellishments, retro femininity and vibrant prints. le cose con cui tu parli con il pubblico di avere emozioni e l'addosso ed è perfetta e lui è un genio pure adesso lui si emoziona magari sbaglia io la chiamo affermazione e negazione quindi è un continuo lavoro di confermare affermare e negare e ricominciare Dolce & Gabbana, or colloquially D&G, has permeated its honour through an excessive and bold aesthetic. The elaborate and expansive brand of Dolce & Gabbana has now amassed a large reach over 30 years of its existence. Having found a strong identity in its years of history, being luxurious yet unconventional, this sentiment can still ring true today in the second decade of the 21st century. Founded by Domenico Dolce and Stefano Gabbana in the 1980s, the Dolce Gabbana joint venture was an unforeseen goldmine for the pair. Each were to become industry icons and influential fashion designers for many decades on end. Dolce Gabbana is a two-way venture, with each co-founder of the brand upholding their own intriguing and illuminating history. It's incredible. Let's make the close. For me, is a is the dream when you start to think the clothes and you have the clothes in the mind. I love to make just the sketch, non precise, and after when the clothes with the fabric come back. You know, there is a strange thing, a, a strange magic moment uh, from uh, Dominic and I. When we talk, we talk a lot about fashion. We sketch, but we talk in the beginning. We decide about the color, precise, about mood. Uh, it's about the love. So, uh, when you have the, the sketch precise about the clothes or the rendering. With the no, computer. but when we because talk, the during sketch, the same moment, we have the imagination about what, the, what you're talking about. This is good. 
and after with the sketch, non precise, like this is the dream emotional come sketch. <laughs> after with the, with the fabric, you make the clothes. The starting point is not, is the same all the time because we love Italy, we love the Italian style, we love the femininity, we love the shape, of and we love the masculinity. You know, because this, yeah, we love the two differences. You know. We, 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 we try with this job to make the woman more beautiful. It was in the 79 or 80, I don't remember, and I'm looking for a job because I'm not fashion designer. I don't, I don't make a school for a fashion designer. I'm a graphic designer, and I will love fashion. And I ask other friends if he knows somebody to introduce me in some place to do fashion. So they give me the number about this designer, Italian designer, Giorgio Correggiari, and then I call him, and then the answer, he pick, Domenico pick up the telephone because the designer was not in the office. And he say, okay, you need to speak with the designer, and I, I'm just an assistant. So now can I meet you before, because I would love to uh, introduce the designer, and then I meet him in a club in Milan. So we were together for one year and a half there, and I go to army, and I'm back, we start to work together and it started the love affair too. So then with the job, in the beginning is, we have a different um, clients. You know, we are like a two different uh, freelance. Because you work more in the accessory, I work more in the clothes. But after the work grew and grew and grew, and we decided to work all together with some company. After Dolce & Gabbana met, they realized that they possessed a love for fashion and also for one another. And whilst they met in 1980, 1982 saw the beginning of the two's partnership and ultimately the building blocks were laid for Dolce & Gabbana's future. After a failed chance at landing Milan Fashion Week of 1984, 1985 had better prospects, and it saw Dolce & Gabbana's debut to the world. Wealthy financiers and investors had backed up their line and ultimately allowed them to gain exposure, although they were working in a minuscule studio situation. Their debut launched to much critical success and acclaim. Dolce & Gabbana launched their first collection of women's wear in 1986. It was titled Real Women, the collection was the first of many Italian cultural references, plucked and reformatted to create a modern fantasy ideal. Just all these stories start when, when, uh, when you are a child, and your fantasy, it grew with you for the rest of your life. You know, dream, you know, everything starts from, from the dream. You dream at young, your dream and change during your life, but everybody follows the love. So when did but this... I love Sicily, I love Italy, I love fantasy. I, you know, I take myself wherever you want to go. Real Women was a recollection of Italian heritage, cinema, and actual women's aspirations. Henceforth, Dolce and Gabbana's fashion lives and presence exploded. We love fashion, and the, and the people love the fashion. The designer works for the customer, don't work just for the magazine or for yourself. If you love fashion, you give to the fashion all you love. What's the importance of the fairy tale? All the people want to dream. They dream in fashion, they dream in life, in the job. Without dream, I think you don't wake up. Always woven into collections in their process were historical paths formed not only by their own classic Italian journey from south to north, but two sources of costuming, poverty and Italian ancient and modern history. The filmic style of Rossellini asserted Sicilian passion for certain works of art. Sophia Loren additionally gave way to their brand image to grow into an erotic, dominant and aggressive art form with feminine overtones.
1993, a testament to Dolce Gabbana's newfound fame arrived in the form of pop sensation Madonna noticing them. In New York, on the 17th Street and 7th Avenue, in between, now between 7 and 8, is an, it was an Italian restaurant, Closto, I don't remember the name. Closto. She arrived dressed like a, a man with a basco because he, he worked uh, the time at the she time with Dick, Dick, Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy. Now she arrived, so beautiful and <gasps> totally wet. Then I said, oh, my God, Madonna. <laughs> and, and because she was for us it was the, the first, the most big icon. She's already, because you know, we have, the, we, have the, the, we have the same age, more or less. And so now we start with her, but occasionally. But then you became great friends. Yes. Yes, so, yes, of course. Soon. Yes, of course. Where, first of all, she make a lot of interview, like you could ask her, what you love, what you like, la, 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 la. And then, okay, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> we love Madonna because Madonna has a style. You recognize all the time Madonna because she changed but don't change. She has a precise style and you recognize in the world Madonna style. Now we start with Madonna and we develop with Whitney Houston, Tina Turner and many, many, the Kylie Minogue and uh, Ben Affleck, man, woman, pop star, movie star, many, many, many things. But for us the most important thing is when we have a, a true relation. It's not a friendship, you know, it's different. When you have a contract, for example, we work with celebrities for a job too, like, you know, to, to like, um, Scarlet. for yeah, the makeup and fragrances. And this is a different job. The rest is different, you know, and it's, it's much better when you pass, uh, when you stay on weekend with Kylie Minogue and you know, maybe you go out for dinner and you know she knows more, better from us and I, we know better from her. When she has something, we know what, you know, the, the, the taste. You know, it's, it's very different. It's not a contract, it's a relationship. D&G's general aesthetic in the form of its campaigns was ultimately cultivated within this period of time. Beyond a penchant for enhancing femininity, a newfound masculine style was adopted by the duo in 1994. Sapphic chic was a masculine way in which women could exemplify a new look. Encompassing girdles, corsets, D&G had revealed an even greater ability of theirs in experimenting with their progressive collections and negating minimalism. So the idea is to give at the customer, at the audience, a dream. You know, that the dress is a, a, a help to be more, more beauty. You feel, you for, feel better, to see on the mirror much better, to hear the friends say, wow, you look good today. You know, it's, this is a, it's good and is a good help for the, your brain, for yourself. So now we respect the woman because we love women, very feminine and sexy. And the same is for men. This is the, the tradition about but Dolce the Gabbana. But the tailor, the tailor cut is, when you, you cut the clothes, it's very important you have respect for the body. And if you help with the nice balance, with the nice point, all the, all the characteristics about the feminine body and the masculine body, this is the very Tenor cut, and we love working in the tenor way. Breast, breast, hip, chest. And, and the nice tailor help for make much better the, the, your shape. 
if you have, I don't know, one shoulder, one up, one down, because it's normal, you're going to have the shoulder, but the, the jacket more balanced. We are balanced. like a doctor. Yes, you, know? you make the weight uh, in the woman, you make uh, the weight more small, <laughs> and, the uh, and the chest does a little bit more big. The proportion, this is uh, very important. And in this way, the, um, the shape about the body can make much beautiful the, for men and for women. The early 2000s would be epitomised by further fame and expansion for their business. And although being romantically involved for such a long period of time, the early 2000s granted Dolce & Gabbana the strength and independence to separate romantically while continuing to work together professionally. To this day, branding has been a pivotal element of Dolce & Gabbana's total brand identity. Having established themselves as a luxurious, internationally recognisable house, DNG's mass merchandising and expansive range of product is not their only key to success. Imperatively, the duo has maintained an advertising medium and style that suits the context of their luxurious history. We understand now, with the maturity, con la maturità, the people want about us the essence of Dolce Gabbana. It's the sense of family, after, the sense of Italian mood, because in a, in, a, in a picture, by clothes, by campaign, you can feel food, you can feel art, love. you can feel love, you can feel, you, love. you can feel family, you can feel the Italian typical um, sense of life, you know, and we, we take care, we love it, this, we are like this. Although ultimate pricing strategies and value-based market systems work in a business standpoint, the public relations side of Dolce Gabbana has certainly had its share of challenges over the last few years. Having banned several publications of magazines and newspapers from their runways, supposedly DNG made these decisions due to bad reviews or an alleged lack of visibility for the brand within the publications. Dolce & Gabbana continue to ban Vogue, the New York Times and other journals are clearly not visible representation of their clothes in their publications. Fighting with the media is sometimes a dangerous pursuit. The success of our success is what they have to say to the others. In reality, it should be asked to the public of the road. To superate the filters, to superate the journalists of mode, the buyers, because then you at the end communicate with who? With the final client, with the final client, with the final client. And he is the one who decides your success, no one else. Look, it's a kind of mix. It's a little bit un po' eh, questa istintività che abbiamo nel fare le cose, un po' il divertimento e un po' è il piacere che abbiamo noi di stare in mezzo alla gente, di vivere il quotidiano, esatto, le, persone. le persone, oggi questa lavoro giovani, è meno giovani, i vari ceti sociali, nelle varie situazioni, ristoranti, strada, shopping, città, discoteche. Cioè renderti conto che comunque la vita va avanti e noi sì, ok, facciamo un bellissimo lavoro, siamo, viviamo in una prigione come la chiamo io dorata, però dobbiamo uscire da questa prigione dorata per capire esattamente la gente cosa vuole. Dolce & Gabbana, a one luxury fashion brand which is no stranger to controversy and the ongoing media outrage and the often seen PR misstep. And in that theme, let's count backwards the most recent PR calamity and what happened following the release of a promotional campaign to herald the 2018 arrival of their big Shanghai runway show. And again, it was Stefano who put his designer foot right in it. This is the Xiang 欢迎收看《Dose and Governor》，喜快吃饭第二集。
。今天我们要吃的是传统的西西里香炸甜卷儿，终于有一个尺寸不那么让人手足无措的食物了。这是不是这太夸张了？来，拿起筷子，在手里整理成钳子的形状，夹起一根甜卷儿。对你们来说，还是太大了吗？你们还可以把一根筷子插进甜卷里面，像这样吃，这会让你感觉自己身在意大利。不过你是在中国 b r i g h t f a s m o In questi giorni abbiamo ripensato moltissimo, con grande dispiacere, a tutto quello che ci è successo e quello che abbiamo causato in, nel vostro paese e ci scusiamo moltissimo. Le nostre famiglie ci hanno sempre insegnato a rispettare le varie culture di tutto il mondo e per questo vogliamo chiedervi scusa se abbiamo commesso degli errori nell'interpretare la vostra. Vogliamo anche chiedere scusa a tutti i cinesi nel mondo perché ce ne sono molti e prendiamo molto seriamente questo, questa scusa e questo messaggio. Then there was Dolce Gabbana dropping criticism on same-sex parenting in vitro fertilization parenting from an interview Dolce Gabbana did in 2015 with an Italian magazine. You are born and you have a father and a mother. At least it should be like that. We oppose gay adoptions. I didn't say anything other than I would be boycotting the, the products.、Um, I just found it.、Uh, Offensive to say that any child was、um, synthetic. Their own personal beliefs about family are their own beliefs, and I respect them. Although I find it very sad that two gay men would feel like that. But in the end, life is too short not to have an olive branch, and in the end, an olive branch will be extended. And then, who would be the perfect choice for DNG's support in 2017? None other than Donald Trump's partner, Melania. Not only choosing to dress Melania in 2017 for public and overseas appearances, Stefano Gabbana became vocal in their support for Melania, even calling her a hashtag DG woman on their Instagram. In response to the resulting social media boycott, DNG launched a fashion campaign titled Hashtag Boycott Dolce Gabbana, featuring white T-shirts and hashtags with large love hearts. Even Stefano Gabbana wrote in the caption, "Thank you, haters. Remember, hashtag." Boycott Dolce Gabbana, please. This recent Shanghai disaster, amongst all the others, seems to have subsided at the moment. But it still serves to be a vivid reminder that his loose late-night social posts still carry grave consequences. But despite the controversy, DNG serves as a great example. An explosion of Italian ready-to-wear that has been carried forward around the world to this very day. As role models, Dolce and Gabbana continue to produce quality clothes, amazing advertising campaigns and collections. To this day, Dolce and Gabbana have created a legitimate, global, and distinguished brand. Available on over 3,000 retail outlets worldwide, their dominance and power and legacy is unequivocal. The social stature excludes no consumer and aims to make any individual sexy as well as unique.